time in handling Frank. An awful lot of people will have a hard time handling yeah, Samaralia. But, but, huh? but on the other hand, you know, that could be by design because right now Frank has not come off the, off the sky. Right. He, he is not into the offensive flow, and as soon as he releases the ball, sometimes he just hangs his head. And yeah. right now, I think, uh, you know, a way of getting a player back in is get him down to the block area and, and reduce his shooting range. And that's where they have him. And there he is. Ball was tipped and Burden is fouled. And that time, Glassboro catches a little bit of a break. And uh, you can see Dwayne Reed very upset with the goings on right now. I, I don't think he feels his team has any sync whatsoever. Well, right, here. Yeah, right now, Glassboro, and I don't think it's a matter of that. I think right now, Glassboro is, is complaining that there's a lot of hand checking going on and a lot of fouling going on. I, I've seen uh, Reed look over at Coach and just give a disgruntled look like, you know, Coach would make a one pass for shooting the ball. But that's the time to say, okay, the jump shot is forbidden. We will post up, seal in, take the ball to the hole, or drive it to the block. Burden makes the first of two. As Giannini uses his cards, as always, to signify his offenses and defenses on both sides of the ball. So he has the X in brown, John, whatever that might mean. Burden makes both. He has seven. The lead is 14. So a small dent, four-point dent in that lead right well, now. Well, I think his X is back to a man. Yes, it is. Baum inside move. He's got it. Eddie Baum showing what made him a prolific junior college scorer. Yeah, Eddie was, was close to 30 points a game led in the, the junior college ranks. Led rank. the state of New Jersey in his second year at Ocean County College. Much better movement by Glassboro right now. Riggs, though, tried to go one-on-one. -on -one. Reed now. Dwayne Reed may have gotten hit. He got away with it, but they're going to call a foul on Burden. And, John, just what you said, that's what he went back to the coach and said. They're just not calling any fouls. He got hit right on the bottom of his arm that time. Ricky Myers to check in. His first action in the second half, 16-18 to go. It's 16-point Gothic lead. Bob Levline, John Adams here on for OBC TV, and uh, check your local listings. You'll see they're able to see this game if you're just picking up part of the second half. It's been one heck of a contest. Still a 16-point spread. McKevitt holds off Burden, and he's fouled by Semiralia. Semiralia just having one heck of a time with the speed he, of glass. He's uh, having a heck of a time on both ends of the floor. That time, Mark just pinned him behind him, and he had no choice but to follow. Uh, McKevitt had his man pinned, and Semiralia came by to try to help a little bit, I think, John, on that one, and it just cost him. Burden can't afford the foul. He has, a, he has three. Yeah, Michael Burden has got to be in this game. He had a great, great start, and physically, State had a problem with him early in the game. Uh, Omar Foote, another physical specimen for Glassboro in to try to stem this tide. McKevitt now on the scoreboard, his first. See, all those stats of Jersey City in terms of having problems with field goal percentage and having problems with free throw percentage, the more extended the lead is, the easier those shots become. Yeah, and you can throw all those stats out the window and uh, mix that with their great defensive pressure Semiralia, almost from right in front of us, John. Uh, that's an NBA three. But he's got to do more. He's too predictable offensively right now. He is totally on a perimeter. Kennedy almost got himself in trouble there with the ball. Glassboro back to the man. Baum trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Back up to Watkins, and he gives it right off to Kennedy to try to kick this offense in. 25 on the 45 for State. And they very rarely have a problem. That's good defense that time. Summer Excellent help out. A little bit questionable on whether he was there or not. Coach Brown is working the official again. John, I'll tell you, though, when you go to the referees meeting, myself being a ref, they tell you 90-plus percent of them are charges because you don't have to do anything to have defensive position but be where you're supposed to be. So, uh... Are you a zebra? At heart. I've been working with a zebra. <laughs> Don't get me nervous. <laughs> now, see right there, Glassboro again. They, they've done such a great job in the first four, last four minutes here, and now they're going back to the one-and-one one offense. It's not going to get it done as and we have a change on the call. Steve Turner saw that ball go the other way. And uh, a little pat on the back from John Giannini, I guess just to get a little bit of an answer <laughs> for what's happening here today. 
15 point lead for the Gothics. Good move by Glasgow playing man. They really don't have a choice. And Moralia holds King. There's that's just a mismatch. Uh, King King is so strong and and Frank is uh, he's just playing behind. He's getting caught behind. You know defensively as we see uh, Michael Burden come in for Frank and a timeout by Glasgow. But back to that post move. Defensively, when you're playing a team like Jersey City who loves to pound the ball into the paint, perhaps you should front the low post ball side and pinch from the weak side and, and just take a chance on that type of defense for a while. Now, well-coached teams will not show that move every time. Within the next three or four minutes, you might front ball side, you might front to the baseline side depending on where the entry pass is coming from. Okay, we have a break in the action here with 15.05 to go. 57.42, the Gothics on top. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Be a winner in life. Say no to drugs. Say no to drugs. A public service message from the National Federation of Parents for Drug-Free Youth and Team Valvoline. Welcome back here to Jersey City State and... Uh, John, you were alluding on the thought and you were just giving some deep thought to what was going on and Jersey City State just on a serious roll and uh, you know you always pick the things being learning you know learning situations this is definitely a situation of learning for for Glassboro too on what to how to deal with certain situations well if you look at their schedule so far they've only played one team and that's Kane College that has exerted this type of pressure on them and then uh, we talked about that being a key on how they handled it in the outcome of this game. Okay, the inbounds to Jersey City. Neil King to the basket. He's got it. King has eight, and he's starting to assert himself here on the offensive side. John, only his second game, but he seems to be getting his feet ready here. Candidate call for the block. On that foul, you're going to see Reggie Riggs check right back in for Rick Myers. And John, I got a good question for you. Can you ever have too much talent? I sit here with a feeling on the Glassboro side that it's a little bit of like, you know, in and out, in and out, and guys are starting to, you know, get perturbed, or can I well, do we, this we better than somebody about else? Depth. I don't think uh, a coach can have too much talent. Um, but, but we talked about depth, and we said that that state was 10 to 11 deep, and, and obviously uh, Charlie has, has proven <laughs> that in his substitutions. <coughs> on the same side, Glassboro using their substitutions freely, and uh, you'd have to think that that would help teams and keep everybody happy. But I think looking for the right combination, and that's been the hard thing for Glassboro. Well, Glassboro right may now. be uh, two, possibly three people short. Burden and hurries it and puts it in, and you just mentioned Burden as being an important factor to get back in. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a low post player with a lot of strength. Kennedy being covered by the six foot four inch Wiedemann, so a size mismatch there, but not much. Yeah, Glasgow speed. doing a much better job on a defensive end. Riggs, good spin move to get open. It's stolen by the quick hands of Kennedy. Two on one, Watkins knocked away. No a foul that time on Paul Wiedemann. So to the line for two will be Jersey City. Now, that's what the pressure also does for you. It, it, uh, it forces you sometimes to turn the ball over, but more importantly, you get a lot of easy layups off the back end. That time, Riggs tried to force himself through the hole and uh, did make a good spin move the first time around, but when you make that move, you look up and uh, surprise, surprise, with Jersey City State especially, because they, they come in double. Not John, a good concept, man-to-man -man by Jersey City. They're just moving with the ball. When a man moves almost in his own concept they're playing their man with a very quick switch yeah they're playing a, a, a very very aggressive deny type of situation on the ball side and taking their weak side people and they're coming over and almost playing a zone in the lane until the ball is reversed and that helps on a double team because when the guard penetrates someone is already in the lane waiting Wiedemann rigs the corner jump Riggs got it Reggie Riggs has 13, and Reggie Riggs can light it up quickly, John. And Jersey City, as we said before, not known to hold for holding the ball, will put the ball up at the basket, so don't count Glassboro out yet. Now, Glassboro now, see exactly what we talked about. They fronted the low post and pinched from behind. 
and that time, Dwayne Reed called for an over-the-top foul again. That's going to be the seventh team foul on the prop, so we're going to go to the line, John. Well, again, I, I think it depends on, on how much the Gothic lead is, depending on uh, how easily that foul shot will fall through. Okay, that was the six. The scorer beat us up to the thing. Bruni pulls for three again. He's short. The rebound to Omar Foote. Ahead of the field is Reed. Good head fake. Jumper won't go. There's Foote for the rebound and almost a good put back by Omar Foote. And uh, I sense a little bit of the momentum changing. John, I don't think it could have stayed that heavily in Jersey City's favor throughout. We said early in the first half, with all the momentum on Jersey City's side, they still couldn't steal away. They got away in the last three minutes, as you mentioned, the important part of the game, and that was the key surge. Uh, right now, Sean Rooney, uh, I just noticed some tendency in the first half, and also uh, since he's been in, he likes to drift to the perimeter and take that shot. And really with the lineup that State has in there, Coach Brown is going to need him to go to the glass. And if he doesn't, I think we're going to see a little bit of dominance of Glassboro on the boards. Foot makes the first, and he gets the lead down to 12. So a little dent in the armor here now. Glassboro uh, only trails by 12. Make it 11, so... Not a bad job here by the props. Very quietly sneaking back eight, into eight it. Eight-point turnaround in three and a half minutes. Very important, and I think they've really done it on the defensive end. That's Frank in the corner. There's he goes one-on-one. -on -one. Pinch. To Rooney. And we'll see who that's for. Aiko stays with Jersey City. They hustled with it with uh, intention. They thought it might not have been their ball. Beck will inbound the ball for the Gothics. They try to run their line out of bounds. Deep to McKevitt. And good job by these big men to keep the ball over their head, John. See, right now, Glassboro's taking their inside game away by totally fronting the post ball side. Beck misses. He gets another try. Doesn't get the roll, and there's Foot with the rebound again. Very important offensive possession right here. Can cut it below 10. And that's one of the key numbers. It'll be nine if they can score, possibly eight. And Paul Wiedemann did an excellent job of handling the basketball. Inside to Reed. He's held that time by Frank. And that's Dwayne Reed. And I think that's more all he wanted to see was that let's get the game in perspective. He did a great job there to seal his man, John, and uh, spreading the floor, putting it underneath, like you said, just spreading put the, ball the floor the and using a lot of two-man game with the wing in the low post. That's going to give him a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. So, John, we're going to start the parade with 12:23 to go, and it won't be long before they're shooting too. This could be a long 12:23. That's why the first half was so fast, John. It never balances out. In and out. Over the top that time, Burden get, might have got away with one, but he misses the bunny. Burden misses the chippy putback, and here comes Jersey City. Does that hurt? And Charlie Brown not liking what he sees. Excellent, he decides to use a timeout. Excellent timeout. So with 12.09 to go in this second half, and Jersey City on top of Glassboro by a score of 59 to 48, we'll take a short break from the action and be back with more of this game right after this. This is where they partied, where Denise met Michael. They danced, they joked, they did a little crack, and went up here, where she took the wrong step that ended everything. Only she doesn't know it yet. Drugs make you forget things, like how to prevent AIDS. AIDS, another way drugs can kill. Hello. Research indicates we Americans create too much garbage. So I have spent years developing worms that eat garbage at astonishing rates. Some eat more than others. There's an easier way to save the world. Recycle. To find out more, dial 1-800-CALL-EDS. Okay, welcome back here to Fry's Auditorium. Gymnasium on the campus of Jersey City State. And Coach, you have a thought. Yeah, I, I watched the Glassboro huddle the last two times, and I think we picked it up on the screen the last time, where we saw the, the, the coaching staff just totally in the face of their players very, very aggressively. This time, much change of demeanor. Very, very calm. 
Way to go, guys. We're, we're executing our things right now, and this is what we're going to do for the rest of the game. Thrown away by Frank, and he throws it right away. Does Myers. Too hard that time to Dwayne Reed, and it goes out of bounds. It'll go back to Jersey City. There's a, an That's old it. adage. If you're in the paint with the ball, you don't pass it. <coughs> Candidate with a good crossover, and it's tipped from behind, and he's fouled by Myers. That's a tough call. From that spot on the court. That's a tough call. Well, maybe the ball will come back to you, John. You can hold it and say something. One and one for Dwayne Kennedy. He hasn't scored this half. Did a great job in the first half. He had five and controlled the tempo. A young freshman and another one of the many heir apparent to that important point guard position. Bob, I think we're going to have the next five minutes almost as the beginning of a game where both teams are going to re-feel each other out again. Mm -hmm. As long as they can keep the lead down and cut it back down, Kennedy makes the first to make it 12. He has six points and he's looking for seven. He's got that, so make it a 13-point lead again. And Glassboro had an opportunity to cut it under double digits, John, and it's right back to 13. And more important for Jersey City, players like Ed Baum and a few other starters got an awful lot of rest while this second unit was in there. Riggs got the jumper. Reggie Riggs starting to light it up. He has 15, and that's the Riggs we're used to seeing. Frank hurries down, misses the jumper. McKevitt might have got away with one on the push-off, and it's knocked that out of his hands and it'll stay with Jersey City. This would be a good time for, for State to, to uh, still apply their pressure, but go to a sloughing man-to-man and, and, don't, and just for, totally forget about Glassboro's outside perimeter sh shooting because they really are not looking to take the perimeter shot. Rooney's well, still in the game. He's in the hole now where he probably belongs. There's a good look down to high low. Great play. High low play to Sean Rooney. He has another deuce for 10 for him. So he's made an impression in his first start, John. His yeah, first what, game, excuse what me. What State did was flash to the ball, opposite the ball, and post it on the low side. Reed on McKevitt. He goes right into him, and again, McKevitt reached through but got away with it. Here's Baum leading the break. From the foul line, Baum's got it. He's Eddie a Baum has shooter. 13. I believe he's made his last five. That gives it a 65 to 50 lead, back up to 15 as we approach the 10 minute mark in this contest. Myers over to Riggs, Riggs open for three. Off the back of the rim, all Jersey City on the ball. Into McKevitt, his turnaround or goes. Might be a timeout. Might be another time. That time, McKevitt looked like he didn't have an idea what to do with it and just turned, got the jumper off. But and again, made it work. forget that statistic as we do see a timeout. Jersey City having a hard time, John, and while we got a chance, it is awful tough to sustain those runs. Well, again, it's State's defense that enabled them to re extend that lead. Okay, and while we talk about that, John, look at the balanced scoring we have here for State. Bauman Watkins with 13, Rooney 10, King 8, Canada 7. Uh, a real good group of guys. Conceivably, John, we can put five or six players in double figures. Beck has seven. So a real good opportunity, and uh, except for a small lull, they've kept their intensity up throughout this contest. Well, I think that's a trademark of uh, Charlie Brown's teams. Uh, he does have balanced scoring at all times. He always has four, five, and sometimes uh, six players averaging double figures for an entire year. And I think that's just because of uh, his, his, uh, his philosophy in terms of rotating players in. Hey, they come to practice. They practice hard every single day, and uh, they're rewarded. On the, other, time. on the other side of the ball, Riggs has 15, Semiralia 13, Burden 9, and then after that, Dwayne Reed has six, so the two main people who do the scoring for Glassboro have theirs, but... Uh, yeah, but Semirali is, is not having his, his game. Uh, he is of no factor. He's hit a couple threes, and defensively, uh, he's had a tough night. That'll be a foul on Kennedy as he rode Riggs down the lane that time. And Waddleton will check back in. Danny Waddleton got quite a rest from... Uh, Canada gave him a nice spell in there. Uh, did an excellent job. 
as he goes right over to talk to coach Charlie Brown who explains everything to him and uh, Charlie Brown working the sidelines John that's why he stays in that shape I think he's, he's walked up and down the bench length of the bench <laughs> about three or four miles worth Riggs for one and one to try to cut back into this lead he gets one of them now he's get the second opportunity yeah it's a good time to mention that uh, you know Charlie's had uh, his assistance with him for a long period of time uh, John Stallworth, Artis Brown, and uh, Donald Copeland. And boy, you could anywhere you go to a high school game, you'll find those guys on the road. Reggie Riggs makes both ends. He has 17 to lead the props, but more importantly, they got it down to 15 again, so we'll see if they can cut back into it. Good overplay that time. Riggs almost comes away with it. Uh, we could have, that's exactly what Jersey City doesn't need that time. Bound forces one. Yeah, Eddie's had such a great half. Foot to try a three. He's got it. Omar Foot, a three-pointer. Down to 12. Nine and a half to go. Inside. Nelson's turnaround too hard. Foul. We'll see who the call's on this time. It's going to be a pushing foul, so we have no idea on this one. That call was on Wiedemann from inside out, so it'll be a one-on-one -on -one opportunity for Ed Baum to try to get this lead back up to 14 or at least 13. One-on-one -on -one for Baum. Yeah, Glassboro has shot uh, over 180 three-point attempts this year, while State has shot 124. So if there is an edge... I would think the props may have a three-point edge in terms of shooting uh, for down the stretch of this game. Right now, Semerlario is on the bench, and uh, he's, he's leading the props in three-point attempts, shooting 42% of 72 tries. Baum makes both for 15, and John, but they seem to have a little bit more of a sink and a, and a mesh as he goes with Semerlario, not dominating the offense as he normally does. And, and he wasn't helping on the glass. Right. And now they're getting a little more action with Omar Foot in as he goes right down the lane. His fadeaway won't go. He's knocked backwards. Jersey City off to the races. Good steal by Wiedemann. And they're back. Numbers. Oh, King was above the box. Neil King, John, had to be almost into the middle of the box when he got that ball. Yeah, Coach, uh, Coach Giannini is still working the official because he wanted a foul on that penetrating move last time down the floor. There's no doubt in my mind now that they're working that spread off Lance, one pass, and looking to take it right to the hole. Well, Omar Foote will go to the line for two and try to cut back into this lead. It's a 14-point Jersey City lead. A lot of time. Still 8.56 to go in this second half. Third foul on Neil King, and Foote misses that one. Nine team fouls on the Gothics, eight on the Profs. So, John, we're getting near to that old two point, two shot, excuse me, situation. Foot to try the second. He's got it. Foot has eight. Out of the game will be Burden, and Semerali will come back in for the Profs. Now, let's see if they can continue with this, John. They've played a good second half where they settled it back down. It, uh, they're down by three and a half. But yeah, they had it down to uh, 11 with a chance to cut it to nine and, and uh, didn't execute that. But their defense is a thing that's, that's picking them up. They just can't come up with the loose ball. Yeah, you got to grab it. You can't dribble it off the floor. And now Jersey City will have an opportunity to set it up. Watkins looks inside to try to get the offense going. He comes in, stops, he pops, and he's got it. Darren Watkins answers back with a deuce. Back to 15, 8.20 to go. John, there comes a point when you start reaching panic situations. When does that happen now for Glassboro? No, not yet. Not even close. Semeralia looks. This time now they work the offense. Wide open is Reed, and there's the offensive sets that Giannini likes. Yeah, Reed not, has a Now deuce. they've worked some back screens. Semeralia gets beat. Great block that time by block. Foot. Semeralia leads the break and gets it knocked away and stolen. Split. Bound 
Helm doesn't go, but there's Nelson for the putback. Nelson John, surprisingly, his first points of the game. You know, Glassboro is, is like two or three possessions away from getting this thing back, and every time they get there, State makes a defensive steal. Great job by Riggs, he can't put it back in. Reed is fouled and it won't go, so a little bit of bad luck, too, to add to the troubles which Glassboro's had. They just can't get the ball to roll into the hole, John. They're doing an excellent job on, on the offensive glass it's as uh, Mark McKevitt checks back in to give some additional rebounding strength. Melvin Nelson will check out for the Gothics. McKevitt will come back in. Four fouls on Nelson, so that's a, one of the main reasons why he's gone to the bench. Two shots for Dwayne Reed. He has eight. And he makes the first. Not a normal game for uh, for Melvin tonight. A uh, little bit below. John, they're still saying that, you know, and it becomes a lot of in your head whether you can get back and put everything in perspective. They're trying to get Nelson to stop worrying about that knee and taking a shot in that knee and getting it over it. A great player when he was right. Yeah, he's been averaging almost eight, eight rebounds a game, and uh, I can't recall even one. Neil King won't go. He's got his own rebound. Putback won't go. King a third time. He so dominated the offensive the boards. So quick off the floor. Great job. Individual effort, John. He was surrounded by three players and got that ball up two different times. He'll get two opportunities now as Jerome Frink will check back in for the Gothics. And uh, you had to be impressed with Frink's ability in his game in the first half and even what he's done in the second half here off the bench. Very, very solid player. Compliments the role very well and does exactly what's asked of him. And here comes Michael Burden back in, who I think has been a key to this game so far. It's funny, John. Uh, Jersey's had the chance to lock this up, and uh, with their style, I guess nothing's ever a lock when you push it up the court. Not when you have the quality athletes uh, that we're seeing here tonight on both teams. Well, Excellent coaches, and... Uh, just a great atmosphere to play this game in. King makes the second. He has nine and off the hands of Glassboro State, it'll go back to Jersey City. The pressure, John, it shouldn't be catching him by surprise now. Believe it or not, it does. And, and, and I can't explain it uh, from coaching all those years. You just sometimes let down. It doesn't seem like it's as much at times. And you just take it for granted. Baum stops his short jumper, won't go. Semaralia got away with one. There's Frank, ever opportunistic. And Waddleton calls for the ball, and it's... The general, time. the floor general. Time to start thinking about the little clock in this gym. King goes baseline, shut down. Baum's back on top with the ball. 27 seconds on the shot clock. Waddleton pulls for three. Off the rim, good rebound that time by Wiedemann, and he leads his own break. Reggie Riggs trying to get free. Samaraya stops, and it won't go. Rebound the burden, and he's tied up. He got hooked up with his own man originally, John, and it, Jersey City guy just walks right in there and tied it up for the jump ball. State will get it for this jump ball situation. The Gothics will have it. 6.15 on the clock. 14 point bulge for the Gothics. Prop still in the man. There's Fink, uh, excuse me, Frank with the ball. Waddleton trying to back in a little bit. State using a little more clock these past few possessions. Uh, Waddleton's just not going to allow the ball to, to get back in the air as quickly as it's been going up. Jerome Frank looks to go on him, man. Under 20 on the shot clock. This is so frustrating to a team that's down. Look at Omar Foots excellent, hustle to steal the ball. Excellent. He gives it to Wiedemann. Good, no oh, look. Oh, yes. Basket in there for Michael Burden. Burden has 11. 12 point lead as very quickly Darren Watkins hurries up back to get into the game. Neil King's there. Offensive foul. John, that time he didn't even have to lean in. It was his basket. He had the position, he had everything he wanted, and he just drove his chest down a little bit. Oh. Oh. 
And we're going to see who into the game. We have subs coming into the game. Darren Watkins back into the game. Dwayne Reed, Sean Rooney back. Uh, Neil King, a real good effort, though, John, tonight. Uh, excellent, excellent.